in this final video of the series Selling Service Design with Chris Lowe and myself, you're going to learn the biggest sales tip Chris has got for us so far. If you have no clue what this is all about, again, check out the playlist over here, the first video, and we'll explain it uh, in detail. Now, Chris has already helped us solve three sales, handle three sales challenges, but we've got one thing left and that is the question chris if you reflect on your career your long and epic career so far <laughs> um and think back about all the sales related lessons you've learned along the way and paid the price probably uh, along the way what is the lesson that you wish you've learned earlier in your career and why Okay, mm -hmm. this is a juicy one, Mark, because there's a lot of things I've learned in the process and things that I'm still learning today. And this is the fun part of being in business and an entrepreneur is you get to be a life learner. I think in the early days, the cr most critical thing is to not to be afraid of sales and business and talking about money. I think a lot of creative people find it to to be crass to to cheapen the experience to make it feel gross that we associate creativity with monetary and it makes it feel dirty and because of that we don't tend to talk about money which leads us to charging less to building bids to clients that are unqualified and to get into the income uncomfortable stressful place of dealing with money but what we realize is that when we when it comes to like a business to business transaction People who don't talk about money appear the least professional. It's not the other way around. So when, when you go to a store or you're going to buy a car, imagine how frustrated you would be if you inquired about the price. How much does it cost for that? What options are available? And the person does a whole song and dance but can't tell you hems and haws and just like, you're going to leave. You're going to say, you know what? You're wasting my time. And that's exactly the feeling that you're creating in the other person who you're talking to, your prospective client. So let's learn to talk about money, to, to take away the taboo, the cultural taboos about talking about money, learn how to do it well, and to not undervalue our work. And I think that would be really important. The second thing I can share with you in terms of sales tips is this, is that the entire time that you're talking, imagine if you were juggling uh, four butcher knives or four machetes, how hard would it be for you to focus on the conversation while not losing any fingers or body parts? Well, the answer would be, be quite difficult unless you're a master juggler, okay? So why am I bringing this up? If you're thinking about juggling, it's usually you thinking about, I have a sale to make, uh, I have deadlines I need to meet, I need to convince the client, I need to impress upon them how great I am, how talented I am, the expert I am, I want to, be super smooth and charming and all those things. That's the equivalent of you managing to juggle four machetes at the same time. Most of your CPU is not going to be focused on the other person. That should be your sole focus, which is to listen to the other person. They're in control. They're making the decision. So make sure you're tuning in to what they're saying and asking questions. And leave the knives on the table. <laughs> leave them at home. You don't need them. Leave them at home. E even better. Um, <clears throat> if people want to dive deeper into this topic, are there any resources you can recommend? Yes, I, I'm going to recommend a few books that you may want to read. And my go to standard and on my desk here is the win without pitching manifesto it talks about how to build expertise through positioning and Blair writes it in the ter in terms of a manifesto, like the rules that you must, must not do. I would also recommend Socratic Selling and Never Split the Difference. Those are three very good resources in terms of how to conduct sales and do negotiations. Lastly, if they're if they're interested and want to learn more about what it is that we do, you can check us out on YouTube. We have, uh, I think now, three or four hundred videos on YouTube. It's at the future is here. The future is spelt with that an E. So just remember, there's no E. Drop the ego. And if you want to follow, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at the Chris Doe. If you are not following Chris or the future yet, oh my God, what are you doing, man? 
follow, follow as soon as possible. I'll make sure all the links, of course, are down below in the show notes. Um, we would love to hear from you guys and girls. What is your biggest takeaway from this series? Did you enjoy it? Did we cover the questions that you had? Do you have any other questions? Leave a comment down below. And I want to thank you, Chris, for being so generous with your time, with your expertise, man. Much appreciated. It's my pleasure, Mark. And I'm expecting us to hit 1 million subscribers due to this <laughs> series. So I'm looking forward to it. And if you do, I'll uh, I'll catch up on the next video. Um, yes. If, if you haven't had enough yet and still want to continue, here's here or here is the link to the future. Make sure to click this, check out all the videos that the future has, or check out this video where we'll continue talking about service design as if nothing happened. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.